All right, today we're going to ask, are Kingdom Death Monster Minis that good? All right, so what I mean by that good is there's a lot of talk about how amazing and how great and how wonderful and how fantastic Kingdom Death Monster Minis are. So I got some on the sprue, I got some built, I got none painted. Uh, such as the life of a mini painter and a mini collector and board gamer in general. Uh, but I wanted to do some kind of comparisons for people who maybe haven't spent the $400 to get the base core box of Kingdom Death Monster and are maybe wondering, how good are they? Now the first thing to note is that they don't all come with these nice bases. So you get some of these, but not all of them. Uh, there's a whole unboxing. I'll link to that below in the description so you can see everything that comes in the game. All right, so I'm going to be talking about two things here. The detail level and then also the sculpt design because you can have as much detail as you want and if the sculpt design is boring, if it's not in a cool pose, if it's not dynamic, if it's not in an action pose, then it doesn't really matter too much. Now I'm also going to be comparing this to a wide variety of things. Most of them though are pretty much competitors as in other board games that you can buy. Um, none of them are going to be in the same price point and so that's something to kind of keep in mind. I have some single models that are obviously more expensive than any single model in here that that it's in the core box because you know you don't buy the Phoenix on its own. And then of course I have many where the all-in where you get everything in there that's has way more stuff than even the core box of Kingdom Death Monster is less than the four hundred dollars for Kingdom Death Monster. So we're gonna get kind of a wide variety here, but in general, as a consumer, this is kind of what you're gonna have going on for you. So it to start with, let's start with, you know, like I don't know, you're starting guys. So, here's, you know, one of them here, and again, unpainted, but you can kind of see the quality here. Um, the muscles are really good, there is a navel, and his belly button's actually, you know, divoted, and you can see that. Um, his beard texture is quite nice, I like that, and he actually has lips in there, and his eyes, the whole facial feature is really solid. Now, these all come where you have to build them. And I'm not the best builder ever, uh, so sue me. I'm, I'm not, like, perfect at assembly. I like to assemble stuff in general, more on that later. Um, and so he has kind of this this hairline. Uh, once I primed it and painted it, you wouldn't be able to tell that this is a separate piece. But right now, obviously, you can because of the, uh, the, the green. But, so, you know, I had to add that. But otherwise, he's pretty much all one, one piece. He's got a little bit of a... Uh, a piece here that comes through. I believe this was glued on as well. And then his hand holding the uh, the dagger here. Now, I never actually know, and I'm sure some, you know, engineer somewhere could explain it to me, but why certain pieces are separate. I'm assuming for Kingdom Death Monster, for the majority of it, it's for quality. So, for instance, obviously, I think they could have added the hair as one piece here. Right? I mean, it's not like the hair sticking out anywhere. It's not a crazy dynamic pose. A lot of times, if the pose is super dynamic, um, it needs to kind of be level on the X plane here, or the, the Y plane, or whatever plane this is. Not the Z plane. But e either way, it has to be kind of one-dimensional flat. So you can see here, you can kind of draw a line in between them. And what that means is that, you know, when you actually cast it, that the two halves can fit on either side, and, it, and there's no piece sticking out. If somebody has, like, their sword jutted out somewhere, then uh, either you have to you know, cast it in a weird angle or have two separate pieces as is often the case because otherwise he'd be like going into the steel mold, right? Because if you think about it, the mold's going to go around him like that. So if he had something sticking way down there, it wouldn't really work. But, I mean, there's nothing really crazy sticking out here, right? And so um, you, you probably have to worry about some brittleness in between it. So a lot of times you'll see on board games, if a piece is this close, they'll actually attach it with some plastic. Um, you'll see that on a lot of the... um you know, the, on, on a lot that have uh, straps, so stirrups on horses are famous for this, though you'll see it on like uh, kind of uh, uh, the things you hang like a gun on and stuff like that too sometimes, but you'll see it in between there. Or if somebody has their arms in front of their chest, a lot of times there'll be a little bit of a gap right there, but none of that here because it's all multi-piece as you can see with the sprue here. Uh, but detail-wise, you know, really good, and sculpt design-wise, quite dynamic. You know, he's got his outreached arm there, and he's got all the super well-defined muscles. And again, his face looks really good, too. Now, you'll notice here on the the lantern, 
that there's some, you know, it, it, it's all one piece here, right? And so this is like a little piece that's obviously kind of separate, but not quite separate. And the fingers, um, the hands are actually not the best detailed I've seen, um, but they are pretty good. Same with the toes. You'll notice, especially on the toes, it's actually kind of lackluster quality there. I mean, you, there are some divots, but it's very muddy here. So let me get real close for you. Hopefully now you can see what I'm talking about. The toes are just kind of barely there. They're not very defined. This one's actually better. So this one got kind of a better, better detail level than this one, which, you know, looks like he's almost wearing a shoe. Um, and then the fingers, you know, the details there, it's not super, super defined, but he does have all of his fingers and that's actually quite good. And we can go and look at a, a few more. Let's look at her because she's kind of hunched over. So again, dynamic pose. You'll notice now that she's not level, right, on, on the plane. She's sticking out this way and this way. And so she is in half, right? And so I had to, had to glue her on. I, I, I believe so. I believe her legs are glued in there. Yeah, so right here I had to glue. And that actually went pretty well. A little bit of gap here, a little bit of gap here, right? So the arm was separate. Um, and, and so it just, it depends on the sculpt a lot of times on how they have to, how they have to break it up. Notice her hair was not attached, so her hair was part of it. So why her hair was fine and at that detail level and his hair was separate, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I, I feel like they just break them into pieces so that you can build them, which <laughs> would be kind of weird, but I don't know. I don't get it. Either way, um, really good there. Let's do one more. Let's do this guy. So again, very straight to the point where I feel like they probably could have done this. And again, perhaps I would say it's too brittle, but this arm is fine. So if this arm is fine, why was this arm separate? I don't know. Um, mainly, I guess, because then, and then of course this leg is separate too. And you know, I, again, I'm no expert on how to break them apart, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't always make sense to me. In fact, his hair is on there too. So why his hair was different, I don't know. But again, detail level is great. The putting them together, the gap here, you know, a, a tiny bit of a gap. Again, I'm not the best at assembly, right? But, uh, you know, I, I, I do okay, I suppose. And so you can kind of see I filled it with some green stuff there. Okay. Uh, fitting them on these bases, by the way, is actually kind of difficult to get them to stand and, and glue right. So let's, let's move those aside. We'll look at the line here. Now, here you'll see a, a, a much, uh, a bigger part of the assembly and then with the phoenix you'll see more but you'll see there are some gaps i have not filled him yet and i haven't put him on the base one of the nice things about assembly is i'll be able to paint the underside of him before i put him on the base if i had him on the base it'd be really hard to get my brush up in there so that's kind of nice but his face was separate this jaw was separate this jaw fit perfectly this face fit almost perfectly anytime you're gluing something onto a textured thing like hair or a, a fur cloak a lot of times in the back, you'll tend to get these. This is really hard to do. But uh, a lot of times it's it's done smart, right? And so this crease here is actually probably okay when I prime it and paint it, that won't be noticeable. This one kind of less so. And part of that is because it's not following a muscle. So you'll see here, it's just a sharp angle here. If it had followed this muscle, I think it would have actually hidden a lot better. Uh, same here, where it's a straight line down and then a straight line this way. Uh, a lot of times I actually probably would have preferred it to, to perfectly fit where the leg is there. Um, my, my preference. And then obviously split down the middle, split here and split here. Now you'll notice here that like this is in half, but this is in half in a different spot. Uh, and we'll see that more in the Phoenix. And I'm not sure why they did that, but these are actually very, very hard to assemble. Uh, I've, I've played, uh, Warhammer 40k. I, I did orcs. And so I've built plenty of those. You know, I've done Shadow of Brimstone, I've done, uh, you'll see some of these 75 uh, millimeter kind of garage kits where, you know, that's all resin and you have to put them together with no instructions. These actually had instructions. These are by far the hardest to build. So this guy right here is made out of 51 different pieces. 51. 26 of those are hands. Um, and, and you'll see right off the bat, you know, right, I got a big old gap here. And in fact, I tried to lessen this. It, the post that went in here, so it had a big, nice post, which is good. It means it's nice and secure. Um, however, it, it, it just wasn't fitting in right. right? It kind of wobbled a little bit. There was the space. So I actually trimmed that down kind of as much as I could. And I got it really close here. 
because filling in a gap here with the texture is really hard because your gap is going to tend to, it's going to be smooth. It's not going to have the same texture, even if you try to texture it a little bit. And so I felt I could, I could fill in the gap better here because I could kind of tweak it as I glued it, right? Is it going to be up? Is it going to be down? Um, but I mean, you know, this is two separate pieces. This is a piece. This is a piece. There's two more pieces here. This is a piece. This is a piece. Um, again, all of these hands. And you'll notice some of the gaps here on the hands. A lot of them, they were numbered, which was nice, and the instructions showed the numbers, but it just, first of all, they're really tiny, and I, you know, I kept flicking them everywhere, and this is by far the most frustrating thing I, I built. And then, of course, you know, I'll put it on the wrong side of the, the base, but it's fine because I'm going to base it anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that, but you know, go figure. Um, anyway, uh, it, you know, this, this tail here is one, two, three, four, five, five pieces. Um, and, and it, this, this wood here is one, two, three, four pieces, I believe. Um, so anyway, just a lot of stuff. Now, one, one thing to note here is anytime you see feathers, you want to look at the texture, right? And the texture, you can hear that, I'm sure, fantastic texture on all of the feathers. A lot of times the big ones will be good, the small ones will be smooth. All of the feathers here are good. Even the feathers here are not only separate, but textured really good. Same with whatever these things are, they got a really good texture on them. And of course the skin, you can see the bone ripples here. So design wise, obviously really, really good. Detail wise, really, really good. That being said, you gotta assemble it so it won't quite look like the, like the render, right? If you're, if you're not a painter, then you're kind of stuck like this, right? There's a little bit of overlap here. And I think part of this was, uh, you know, I, so I put these on and then glued this on. I would have almost rather have, I don't know, it's hard because either way you're going to have to try and, um, you'll find this with guns too when you're building them, that they'll be a little farther out or in. But, you know, there's some some major overlap here. I'll have to fill in with some putty. Um, so a lot of stuff there. Well, one thing I, I was kind of interested about is some of these hands were part of it. So like these hands right here, right, were molded on. Right. Whereas, you know, this hand, this, you know, this hand here obviously wasn't. It looks like any ones that jutted out, they had to do that. Again, I'm not exactly sure why, because they're able to jut, you know, this, this out. Right. And so why, why can they do this, but not this? Why can they you know, have this all one piece, but then they can't have this little guy coming out of the mold? I don't know. Uh, again, I think part of it might just be because then you can assemble it, but 51 pieces, this this was certainly a lot. So first of all, you're just going to have to realize it's, it's a lot of pieces, more more than really anything else you're going to be building. And it's kind of advanced too. None of it's super easy to deal with these little things and shove them in there and, you know, the post didn't go in. But, you know, texture wise, sculpt wise, very good. Now let's go ahead and look at some uh, other board games that you can get, other things that you can you can uh you can look at so uh, let's start with hate so hate is by cool mini or not i got a few out here i grabbed some of the bigger guys because i wanted to kind of have some bigger things to compare to the, the the phoenix here but one thing to note is again you always want to look at fingers you want to look at chains you want to look at feathers so you see these chains here um really really nice you can tell how they're interlocked right you can you can tell um, th that they're, they're interwoven. Now, again, this was assembled at the factory, so you can tell this is separate and this is separate, but it did pretty good, you know, so it looks like three pieces, really, because, again, he's kind of flat on the x-axis, right? You can kind of see even where the mold line is. That's where the mold met, and a little tiny bit seeped in between the cracks there. Um, but, you know, they had this jutting out of him just fine, right? That does not look like that was assembled at all, so... You know, again, why they can do that, not the hand, I don't know. But uh, really great uh, chain there. You'll notice here the chain mail on them can show up really, really well. Uh, you'll see some more here, right, with the chain mail. And then these uh, kind of, I don't even know what they are. They're they're like interlocking plates or, or something like that. It's a, it's a type of armor. And the reason I'm pointing that out is I wanted to show you the butcher here. So here's a butcher. I haven't built him yet, though he is one of my favorite design-wise. But you'll notice here, he has a very similar style of uh, armor here. And then he has this kind of chainmail here. And 
what's interesting here is, I mean, everything's nice and crisp. It's like this hard, like kind of ABS style kind of hips plastic uh, kind of games workshoppy. Uh, so everything's nice and crisp. Nothing's bending, which is fantastic. Um, but the detail level isn't actually always as high as I'd like. So you'll notice, hopefully, that the the chain mail here is kind of uh, lackluster. It, it, it's a little too honeycomby for my taste. And then these interwoven pieces, the indents between the links, aren't super deep compared to something like this, which is very close to the size of the links, but the the uh, kind of pieces in between the, the, the where it's pressed down to look like individual links, even though it's not, right, uh, is much more defined here. And then the chain mail is, I think, a lot uh, better. Uh, let me see if I have another one here. I do. Uh, that, again, you can see the chain mail in, in his face here, and it, it just very, very, uh, I think, less honeycomby here. I'm... I'm I like this chainmail more. I find it more detailed, and you can see they do layers really good, really good too. Now this all in of hate costs I think three hundred and twenty, three hundred forty, and I got a ton of stuff. Um, and I didn't have to build it all. It's all pre-built, and it it has a little points that are kind of bendy, but otherwise it's actually pretty solid. And the poses are dynamic enough to where they need you know to be assembled. But they're assembled in the factory, so you don't really have to. And they actually have a good assembly job, which which I appreciate. Uh, sometimes you don't always get that. Uh, anyway, so not not terrible, not not as good as plastic, but certainly quite good on texture. Uh, speaking of texture, so see right here, and this is sometimes you'll get. See, this is an assembly here. Um, this texture on this uh, horn, right? And it, it and it's really good here, and it kind of lessens here. You can kind of see it gets a little soft inside, whereas outside you actually get the texture. So there are points like that that uh, obviously are just not as good quality. Um, but anyway, let's let's look at another one. How about we look at okay? So this is from Mythic Battles Pantheon, and uh, really I got here because I wanted to show you her feathers, very very similar to where very crisp. Uh, texture even on the smaller ones that uh, they don't actually lessen they're still really good on the texture kind of all the way around to the point where they're not smooth um, and instead they actually have kind of the jagged ends of it and then if you'll see here it's kind of the same thing here but it's a little bit more lumpy and so here let's see if I can show you real quick um, you'll notice there's not a divot here even though there's a strand there. Instead, it's like one big divot and then one big divot. And, uh, you know, it, it, part of it's just stylistically. Um, you can see here, there's like a divot here and then here. So there's more here, but um, this one is fully kind of every every piece is jagged. Uh, so again, not necessarily worse or better, but definitely comparable for this. Now on this one, you can see the assembly here, and I think this is a worse assembly job, in my opinion. Uh, same with putting the whole piece on. It's a little rounded here. Um, so there's a lot of pieces that aren't as good here. But uh, this, yeah, pretty good. Now you'll notice a lot of a lot of these. I'm um, Kingdom Death Monsters, obviously better. Um, I'm just wanting to put it in perspective, comparable, because uh, there's a lot of price differences and stuff like that, and obviously the assembly. Now you can get a lesser, right? And so this is a worse mini when it comes to quality. Uh, however, I still wanted to point out that the face is still really, really well. And so he, you can tell that his mouth is open. You can tell that he's screaming. You can tell that he's yelling or whatever. He's got eyebrow ridges and cheekbones and uh, kind of these uh, creases around his mouth up to his nose. And so you get all of that detail still, even in a lesser model, and a quite dynamic pose. You can tell, again, it had to be assembled. Um, but it seems to have been done really well. Here's another line of assembly. So, uh, again, not the best quality, but not bad. Uh, actually, pretty good. Th these rivets and his pants, that those will take a wash really well for painting. Uh, anyway, and uh, of course the fingers. I'd actually put these fingers pretty much on par with uh, the ones in Kingdom Death, and, and that, that they're, they're quite defined. You know, they're not the best, but... You can tell his thumb even has a little bit of a bend there. 
Uh, you're not going to be seeing fingernails or anything. Uh, speaking of fingers, here's another one from Mythic Battles Pantheon. And really, I mean, he's just full of detail. Again, his mouth is open. You can tell he's yelling. He's got his nose and eyes here. He's pointing. And again, you can tell the fingers are actually quite good. His thumb is bent around. And so this hand, I mean, uh, you can tell his fingers resting on here is really comparable to this. Now, it's, it's a different scale, right? It's a different style, right? This is true scale, and so it's quite tiny, um, which is good. But e either way, as a consumer, you're buying this, and, you know, you're getting a, a detailed mini here that's actually quite dynamic. And they and they get crazy dynamic. I mean, you, it's not just uh, static poses that you're going to get from a typical board game here. I mean, this one here is quite, uh, you know, jump, you know, on on one foot here you know, kind of about to stab a dude or whatever. Now, one thing you'll notice here is his base is bent, uh, which is probably the bane of any board gamers uh, thing. And they're not all, you know, this one's straight, this one's bent, it happens. Um, even with this harder plastic, this is a harder plastic, but it just must have gotten hot and shipping or whatever. And all of the bases in Kingdom Deaths are perfectly straight. All right, let's... um. Let's look at uh, let's look at this one. Okay, so these are from Archon, and you can get this for like Vanguard of War or Chronicle X, or a lot of their their games load. Um, they do kind of their own printing here, and it's like a quasi resin. But again, the price here is much, much, much cheaper. And so, really, what I kind of wanted to point out here is that um, if you were to guess which was the more expensive mini, I don't know what you would pick. But this one is more expensive. This costs more than this. And I'm just, you know, looking at this and uh, I, I'm not, I'm not sold on, on the, the price, I guess, is probably my, my point here. When I can get this as a consumer, um, which is, I mean, you know, you know, there's not really a lot to explain here. Look, look at the crispness of the, the fur. It's not even a texture. It's actually sculpted. Right. And so it's not, it's not like, uh, not like this, where it's just a, a texture on these big locks, but instead it's, it's actually separate tufts of fur, um, or, 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 or kind of the bolts on here, or even the little tiny kind of tubes right here. The, the detail here is just astounding. And, and it's a fully textured base, right? Again, on Kingdom Death, you do not get a lot of these. You just get a few of these. On, on these are all kind of styled and textured and he's stepping on there and looking over here and um, I got a few more from there so here's this guy right again snarling teeth um, you kind of see how crisp even these inner pieces are so this is way deep in here and this is just as crisp of a perfect circle line as the design on the scabbard of the dagger thing here and you know he's dragging some some poor dude who really doesn't want to go. Again, fingers. These are like the best. I mean, these are actual fingers, right? Very well done here. And all one piece, which is really impressive for how deep this is going and the fact that there's not, um, you know, a, a, a spot where it's connected um, where it shouldn't be. Nice straight lines here. Uh, anyway, I just kind of wanted to show a few of these to show as... as you know, as competitors, essentially in the same, this is primed, so forgive me on that. Um, when it comes to, hey, I want to buy a board game and I want really high quality minis, uh, everybody goes to KDM, but there are alternatives that are quite good and heck of a lot cheaper. Uh, so here you can see it's a different style of feather, so they didn't actually bother with the texture on this. Uh, that's not to say that they they couldn't. I mean, you've seen the, the quality that they had. It's just more of a uh, this is more of a cartoon style, right? Which is why your face is so big and uh, whatever's going on here with this dog is, is going on. But um, you see the little individual teeth here are quite tiny. Um, all, all these potion bottles or grenades or whatever they are, are like perfectly detailed here. So anyway, just kind of wanted to show a few of those. And again, the the sculpt design right? Not just talking quality, but sculpt design is far superior. Uh, this guy's dynamic, right? Don't get me wrong. He's cool, but he's not, he's not jumping sideways off of a rock, um, you know, 
while turned, and you can see her body's turned here, right? You can see that her her actual abdomen is turned, and then she's aiming down the sight, shooting, you know, as she's pushing off of this rock. Uh, and, and a lot of that is because you have to go in these flat bases, and you're not getting a lot of texture, and even if you do, it's flat. Um, you can kind of get it here, right? Or he's perched on this because you're controlling this. Anything that the sculptor can control, then they can use. So if you're doing these dynamic bases, you can dynamically put your people on there. And uh, I must say, this is really interesting, you know, just to look at, to, to paint, to, you know, to play with. All right, so let's look at another, um, uh, this is, these are resin, these are from Modiphius. And really what I wanted to point out here is, first of all, the scale is really small. It's very similar. Uh, so you'll notice the hands are like the same size, especially actually smaller when it comes to the guys. They gave the, the women really small hands for whatever reason. But, uh, and, and in fact, this, so that's, that's, that's pretty comparable here. So same exact size, same exact scale, true scale and all that. And you'll notice here again, perfectly fine, perfectly straight. Um, in fact, these fingers are really good. Those are definitely, uh, this is a nice hand, uh, to look at. And, uh, again, kind of textured custom base. Uh, for all of these here, and uh, you do have to put them together. And so it was his body, the two arms, and then this. And that's as advanced as you get. You're not having to put anybody's hair on. You're not having to put 51 uh, pieces together with 26 hands on. And, and you still get this detail, like with the bullets here. You can kind of zoom in there. So you can kind of see the, the, the bullets he has there next to his satchel, which has, you know, uh, there's clasps on everything and just really well detailed and again dynamic and so you look at kind of the the ones you get and you know they're 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 all running with their arms up and raised and you know, this is a typical one and this is one of the more standout starting ones for kingdom death and so and again all custom textured base here too pretty darn comparable if you ask me of course as 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 good as this is um oh that's terrible sound as good as this is, and how big it is, or whatever, um, you can obviously get better. So here's a, again, primed, sorry about that. Here's from Celestial, from Dimension Games. This is their 75 millimeter resin uh, kit here. And, and, and so obviously we're at, at a different standard here, right? However, um, first of all, sculpt design is fantastic. And this will be in a board game. It won't be this fancy resin version, but it will be 75 millimeter and big, just like this just not in the resin. Um, but, you know, the, the, again, the detail everywhere is just, uh, it, it's it's no contest, right? I mean, it's just, even this, the detail in this rock, in my opinion, looks much, uh, it just looks very natural, right? It's a very, very good job, very well um, sculpted. So you can see all the crystal lines and everything. So definitely, in my opinion, much better. Right, so there's definitely better out there. Though again, you, you got to take price into consideration, as always, for all things. Anyway, I just kind of wanted to share a few um, thoughts on this as I was building my Kingdom Death Monster, and I've I've heard so much about it, and then uh, and it was actually when I got to to the butcher who I thought is really good, and it's really good. It's it's a great mini, and I just saw kind of how I don't know soft I felt a lot of these. Uh, pieces are like a, like this this lantern here to me just looks like it has kind of soft detail right it just doesn't look super crisp so anyway i just wanted to share kind of my thoughts on the kingdom death monster minis as i was building them and kind of noticing them because you hear so much about kingdom death monster and how great and magnificent and amazing they are and and, and they are great don't get me wrong if you had buckets of Top tier, good and bad, they'd be in top tier, but they wouldn't be the only ones in top tier, and they'd be one of the more expensive ones in the top tier category. And so there's there's that to take into account as well. S talking strictly from a miniature thing, I'm talking about all the cards you get in the core game and all that. I, again, I own it. Obviously, I think it's a, it's a good deal. I don't think it's a bad deal. I just wanted it to kind of provide some perspective and not have this kind of blind, oh my gosh, they're amazing. And a lot of it comes down to sculpt design because, well, I mean, yeah, he's cool, but so is she. In fact, I think she has a way cooler pose. Um, you know, and you might have a lion, and that's cool, but, 
you know, if I was to vote, is this the coolest lion sculpt you could make? I would say no. Um, I'm, I guarantee there are cooler lion sculpts that you could make than, than this guy. Uh, but he has to stand on a flat base because he can't be on a rock. So, you know, he has to kind of be balanced and, and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, those are just kind of my thoughts. And, you know, again, I, I, I already had hate. And so I, I'd seen this great chain mail and then I pull out the butcher and I'm like, eh, I don't know if that's actually any better. Uh, so it, just putting some perspective in here and hopefully you guys appreciate kind of the, um, no BS approach that I'm taking here and not, not singing praises just to sing praises or to fit in or anything like that, but really trying to let you guys know the quality on whether or not these are as good as they say. Are they as good as they say? Um, if you're okay with spending several hours putting 26 hands on this guy, yeah, yeah, they're, they're good. They're great. Um, are they going to change your life? No. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, I appreciate it. If you want to see more deep dives into miniatures, let me know in the comments below. I could make a whole series out of, you know, is it that good or is it not? And it doesn't have to be miniatures. Maybe I'll do one on Gloomhaven. Is Gloomhaven as good as they say? Uh, that's a big one, right? Or maybe I should do it on Kingdom Death the game. Uh, anyway, just let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear more on what your thoughts are on a series like this. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.